Good morning, everyone. It's a it's been a great morning so far, and I sense God by His Holy Spirit is is really here and in the room this morning. And we've been singing that uh, we want to lay our lives down, that we will make room for God. I just want to speak into that for a little bit, and then we're going to have a time where we have an opportunity to respond to that. The series we're in at the moment is about the book of Esther. It's the story of uh, a girl named Esther. And I'm going to give you a one-minute overview in case you weren't here last week when Beth gave us a, a great overview of the book. So Esther is this uh, Jewish girl. She's living in Babylon. The Jews are in exile in, in Babylon. And Esther has been chosen to be become queen. There is a villain in the plot, a guy called Haman. And um, he, is look, he is looking to deceive uh, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and to wipe out the Jews in their entire t- entirety. And Mordecai, Esther's uncle says to her Esther you need to intervene this is your moment to intervene this is what God has called you to do and she intervenes the nation is saved the Jewish nation is saved they are not wiped out uh, and the villain get it gets his comeuppance and that's 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 how the story ends but uh, we're going to concentrate on a few verses at the end of chapter four and the start of chapter five and it says this Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, her uncle, Go gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out Esther's instructions. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courtyard of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of his scepter. That was the sign that she could come and talk to the king. That was a sign that she had been accepted. That was a sign that she was not going to be killed for entering the king's presence without his uh, permission. And today we're just going to look at what, what is in this story, which is a story of faith in God and a story of obedience. And although those words aren't mentioned there, that is exactly what this is, a story of faith and a story of of obedience and those words describe what Esther did you see we all make choices we all make lifestyle choices we all have principles that we live by things that we trust and believe in and those things then become the lens through which we live our life and how we we see the world so for Esther her lifestyle choice was that she was going to be Uh, trust in God, believe in God, have faith in God, and do what he asked. We have other choices. Some of the things that we would think about uh, would be um, how we would live life, the lens through which we would live life would be things like family first. Some people, family is everything. It's all about family. So that is the lens that you live by. There are some people that think that saving the planet is the thing, and that is the lens through which life is lived. Some people think it's all about material things. If I could become a millionaire, so my, their lifestyle, the lens they view the world through it is that. Some people sadly have this uh, perspective that they don't trust anybody. They only trust themselves, and, and they live their life in that way. Some people have this Uh, laissez-faire type attitude that whatever will be will be and just meander through life people live make lifestyle choices Esther made this choice that she was going to put her faith in God and she was going to live a life obedient to God and I think that's a great way to live I believe that's a really good lifestyle choice faith involves us trusting and believing in God believing in Jesus We can put our trust in other things, as I've already said. Uh, 
Sometimes we want to put our trust in ourselves. We only really trust ourselves or we want to trust money. We think if we've got enough money, everything else will sort itself out. But Esther, but I would say, I think there's a better way. I think the better way is to trust in God, have faith in God, and believe in what he says and be obedient to what he calls us to do. To do things his way, not our way. I've got a friend. He's here today. And he says, it's easier to do the thing you want to do and apologize later. He's a great friend of mine. I really like him. I don't, I don't like that, though, because I think, I think it's better to do the right thing. When you know what the right thing is, to do the right thing and trust God for the outcome. So I don't recommend that. In 1 Samuel 15, it says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the Lord? To obey is better to sacrifice. You know, God loves it when we respond to him, when we hear his voice and respond. He's already started speaking to us this morning. When we hear his voice and respond, he, he loves that. When we do things wrong and we're genuinely sorry, he always forgives us. He wants to forgive us. His heart is a heart of forgiveness. But it's better to obey than to do something wrong and apologize. It's better to trust God, to walk in the ways that he calls us to do. He will always forgive us. We are all imperfect. When we genuinely come back and say, I'm sorry, I've messed up, please forgive me, he always forgives us. But isn't it better if we can walk in the way he calls us to walk? You know, when we love someone, we want to do the things that please them. It's just naturally in us. We want to do that. And my heart, my prayer is that we would be like that with God, that when we know what he's calling us to do, that we want to do that because we want to please him. We want to please our Lord Jesus. When we look at the story of Esther, she was incredibly brave to do what she did because she could have died. She literally could have died. There are other examples in the Bible where people genuinely put their faith and trust in God in what looks like really difficult circumstances where it's easier to do something else that isn't God's will. There's a, a soldier called Gideon, and he was in a position where he needed to fight uh, the, uh, an army of Midianites, and he had 32,000 men ready to fight. And God says, it's too many. It's like, how can you have too many people when you're in a fight? God says, it, it's too many. He says, ask them, ask them who's afraid. And 22,000 of them honestly put their hands up and go, I'm afraid. And he said, that's fine. You guys can go home. So they're now down to 10,000. And God says, it's too many. It's like, can you imagine being in Gideon's position? That's too many. It's not, Lord, it's not too many. He said, take them down to the water, see how they drink. The way they drink will determine who you should choose. And 300 of them cupped the water and then lapped it. And he says, pick those 300. That's enough. And it's like ridiculous, isn't it? It's, it's crazy. But God said, no, this is what I want you to do. This is the way. And when you do this, you will see victory and, and God's name would be glorified in it, and it was. We come to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and an angel visits her and says, you're going to have a baby. And she says, I can't have a, I can't have a baby. I've, I've not made love to anyone. I can't have a baby. And she says, no, you're going to carry the Son of God. Can you imagine that situation? In, in that culture, a young girl going to have a, a baby who is not married the, the, the scorn, the shame, the abuse that she would get. Yet she says, I am the servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. That's real faith. That's real obedience. And Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, before he's going to go to the cross, he says, Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. 
right thing is always the right thing. In that situation, I'm sure we would have all been tempted to, there must be an alternative way of doing this. But he, was, he, he had faith that his father was going to see him through that. He truly believed that God's way was the right way, and he pursued it. So if I say, let's be people of faith, let's be people of obedience, the question comes is, would God do that for us? Would he do it for us if we stepped out like that? Well, he's a good God. He's a God who is with us. He is a God who is for us. Yes, he would. When he says, step out and do this in my name, is he with us? Yes, he is. Is he going to see us through? Yes, he will. It takes courage. It takes boldness. It takes faith. It takes the idea of this is the right thing to do in the long term. I know it's the right thing to do. It's going to cost me in the short term, probably. In all those situations we get in life, there's always an easy way out. It's never the right way, but there's always an easy way. But can we trust God? Can we have faith in God that we would say, no, God, I know you have spoken. I know this is the way you're calling me to go. Can we have that posture where we say, God, have your way in us, what we've been singing this morning? Because that's obedience. That's, what, that's like Isaiah when he said, send me. It's going to be difficult, but I'll go, send me. There's a little graphic I want to show on the screen now. And I think this sort of sums up what we're talking about this morning. That faith and obedience actually work around trust and belief in Jesus. If we have trust and belief in Jesus, we have faith that he will lead us and guide us. And when we have faith, and as our faith grows, that leads to obedience. The more faith we have, the more easier it is to be obedient. The more obedient we are, the more our faith grows, which is more easily to be obedient. It's like a, it's like a circle going around there, but it's all based on our trust and our belief in Jesus. If he is who we believe he is, the safest place we can ever be is walking in the paths and the ways that he asks us to, whatever they seem like. And that would be my testimony in life that I've, I believe that this is the way to live. And imperfect as I am, I've made loads of mistakes. There have been loads of times where I've sensed God called me to do something and I haven't done it. But God forgives us, God is faithful. And I know that when I do step out in faith, when I am obedient, that my faith grows. And I'm encouraged to do something more for God. Yesterday afternoon, I attended the Thanksgiving service for Warren Jones, who was uh, a pastor in Dover uh, in the 1990s. And he was also the national leader of our movement. And hearing his testimony described by other people, how he was faithful, how he was obedient, how him being faithful and obedient actually impacts us. We are here partly because of his faith and obedience. That when we are faithful and obedient, that it's like dropping a stone in water, that the ripples of that go out. We don't know where they go to. But I was really encouraged by that. I was encouraged because... When he was here, he brought me a prophetic word. I was a guy that sat at the back who had a faith. I, was, I, was, uh, I had a really solid faith, and I did nothing. I sat at the back for years and years and years. Warren Jones brought me this prophecy saying, God's got his hand on you. He's got a significant role for you to do in this church. I had absolutely no idea what that was. But I believed that that was the word of God, and I did eventually step into that. So, guys, sitting on the back row, very dangerous. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> Only joking. But when we walk in faith, when we are obedient to God, it doesn't just impact our lives. It, it has this ripple effect to others. 
And the greater faith we have, the more we are obedient to what God calls us to do, which grows our faith further and brings us closer to Jesus and brings us closer to the people Jesus wants us to be. Can I ask the worship guys to come back up? Could we sing that song that we just stopped singing? I will make room for you. I'd like the prayer team to come up as well and just go to the sides. I'd like some of them to be in the middle as well, please, this week. We've been talking a lot about breakthrough over the last six months. And breakthrough is happening in this church. You know, every week there is somebody new in church. Every single week. That is not normal. That is miraculous. And the, the, the really miraculous thing is that God is drawing people here that we aren't even speaking to. God, by his spirit, is speaking to people and drawing them here, and we haven't even invited them. But they've sensed something of God speaking, and they've come here because this is a place where they can connect and grow in their faith. Breakthrough is happening. You know, this prophecy said, as you continue to pray for breakthrough, you will see breakthrough. You will see expansion, not just expansion of numbers, not just expansion in events, not just the work of the, the church does in my name, but expansion of faith in the hearts of men. That's what I'm talking about this morning, expansion of faith in the hearts of men, women and children in this place. I declare to you, if you do not see miracles, ask for them. If you do not receive answers to prayer, pray again, keep praying. This morning is a morning for breakthrough in faith and obedience. I absolutely believe it. I believe even from the start of the service, we've had a sense of, she want to... We've had a sense that God is speaking into that. We've been singing, I will make room for you. I want us to just push into that now. You know, we all need breakthrough in situations in our lives. There's all sorts of things going on that you know about that I don't know about. Family situations, relationships, jobs, finance, stuff that's going on in church. You know, Gus brought us a prophetic word last week which said, reach out to me. I will take you to places you have never been before. God's promising to do stuff. We've got to step into it this morning and find faith and obedience in Jesus. We might not have ever done that before. We can do that this morning. Come and speak to one of these guys. If you want to put your faith and your trust in Jesus, you might have tried a lot of things and they haven't worked. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. And for others of us, we've got a faith. But if we're honest, we need more. We need more faith. We need greater obedience. So what's God asking you to step into this morning? What is he putting on your heart? Is it compassion for people? Is it to go out and share the good news of what he's done in your life? Is it about sharing the Bible with somebody? Is it about praying with somebody? Is it about giving or serving I'd like you to stand with me. I'm going to pray. Peter will lead us in worship, but I I want us to respond this morning. You know, some mornings we ask for a response, and we know it's a thing that is pertinent to a few people. This morning, I believe it's a response that's actually pertinent to all of us. We all need more faith in Jesus. We all need to be more obedient than we are. So I'm going, to go and, I'm going to go and ask for prayer when I step down because I know I need more of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to encourage you to step into it too. Amen.